we hear that the commotion happened in Sudan and everything else. Uh, I spoke about uh, France and the disaster happening in France. And three, four weeks ago, the, there was that fire that gutted out in France. And I spoke about uh, UK. I spoke about uh, shootings. I spoke about um, about uh, uh, bombing uh, as people were approaching Easter in an in an East country. And this happened last week in Sri Lanka. And I felt like that most of the time I come through and I say these messages, but many people don't get to see them uh, that I'll be saying. So I need to continue reiterating those messages for people to watch and for people to uh, dissect those messages. Um, yes, Nico is actually, uh, yes, Sudan, you spoke about it. And it happened. As I said, when I said it, I remember some people said it, it can never happen. He can never be dethroned by the army in his nation. And I said it is going to happen within the next one month. And he is gone. Now, as a result, I feel it's, impo it's important that today I do this broadcast uh, to tell people. Kenya, I spoke about Kenya. Remember uh, the prophecy I gave about Kenya? And I said, I mentioned the street name. I said that there will be a street called this street. And I said there's going to be bombing at 10 in the evening. And I said this is going to happen within the next coming days. And in two days, that uh, bombing in, uh, happened in Kenya. At the location I said, at the street I said. Hallelujah. So we have the grace of speaking. But I think that many people do not get the messages. That's why I'm doing this uh, thing for, the, for people so that you listen. So I'm going to start with the three nations. Uh, Mama Letwin is confirming it happened. I said it. Uh, so I'm going to be doing this uh, every now and then uh, so that people, yes, you see, people are saying, yes, I remember, true, people were there when I said these things and those things happened. I'm going to tell them what, I'm, what I've been seeing. Now, um, uh, I want you to understand about these nations that I spoke. Listen to me, I have got nothing against or nothing I'm looking for to benefit from these nations. I speak as the Lord permits me to speak. What I am sent to do is to speak the mind of God. Whether you accept it or whether you differ from it, that is your opinion. I'm not looking for people to like me. I'm not looking for your nations to love me or to hate me. All I do is to speak. The word of God in the book of Ezekiel makes it very clear that I'm a watchman. It is my duty to watch and Make sure I warn people. In Ezekiel, it says it, and it says it specifically like this. It says, I have made you a watchman over my people, Israel. When you see a sword coming upon a nation, warn the inhabitants of that land so that their lives may be saved. But if you see a sword and you do not warn them, that blood, the blood of those people shall be on your hands. Now, I don't want any blood of any nations to be on my hand because I was afraid to speak or I was afraid what people would say after I speak. I'm not going to be intimidated, but I'm going to speak. I'm not looking for any favor from anybody or from any love or people to rejoice and say, oh, you're so happy. We're so happy if the Lord has said this for our nation. No, I will speak as it is. I want to start with a nation called South Africa. This is the word of the Lord concerning South Africa. Whether you like it or not, this is what I heard. I did not hear this word today or yesterday. I heard this word two months ago. And when I heard this word two months ago, I was made to say it in church, live service. I don't know who many, how many people were there when I said it. I don't know how many people watched the live broadcast when I said it or who were standing with me when I said it, but I said it about two months ago and i said it specifically what i said the two months ago is what am i i'm here to add on and to speak on this is what the law the word came concerning the nation of south africa hear me and hear me well inhabitants of the land of south africa this word came as a result of the bloodshed that i saw in your land 
Many weeks ago, I saw that many people were being killed and many people were being uh, tormented and many people were being uh, afflicted. And these people were inhabitants of other nations. As I looked in the realms of the spirit, I saw the blood of this people spilling into the land, into the soil of the land, into the soil of the nation of South Africa. And when I heard, when I saw this, I heard a loud voice proclaiming and saying, give this warning and speak what I've told you to speak. This is not coming from me, but this is coming from him who has sent me. A curse has been laid upon the nations and the inhabitants of the land of South Africa for 50 years. Five zero. A curse has been laid on the land of these people for 50 years because of the blood of the people that have been shed in their nations. The word of God said, I sent foreigners, I sent the aliens to you for you to look after them, but instead you have killed them and you have put them out. As a result, the inheritance that I had given you so that you may look after your brothers, I'm about to take it and divide it among the nations that you killed and the nations of the citizens that you tormented. I saw the wealth of the great nation of South Africa being divided upon the blood of the people that were killed. Listen to me and listen to me very well. A few years ago, I remember I spoke and I said, when there was blood that was being shed in the nation of South Africa, the word of the Lord came to me again as I was in the prayer mountain and said, this they have repeated again and the blood is being shed on the, on the streets and in the land of South Africa. The innocent are being killed, the mothers, the fathers, the children, people who do not know nothing about this are being murdered. And I send these people in this nation. I gave South Africa the wealth it has today so that it may look after its own brothers who are unfortunate. As a result, they are murdering the people, the orphans that I sent into their nations. As a result of this thing that has happened, this was two years ago, three years ago, if I'm not mistaken, and he said, go and give a warning to the leader who was in that country called Zuma and tell him because this has happened while he is still in power, his reign shall be cut short, but his reign is not going to be cut short because... This has happened while this is in power. His reign is going to be cut short because when he was told that innocent blood was being shed in the streets, he laughed, but he did not laugh in his office or in his car. The word of the Lord said he laughed in his bedroom and I heard him laugh in his bedroom. He laughed when he was notified that people were being killed in the land. And he laughed in his bedroom. That laugh is what the Lord got angry about. And he said, for that reason of that laugh, his reign shall be cut short. And I stood and I proclaimed at a time when he was in power. And I said, if he finishes his term in office, let it be known that I'm a false prophet because this is what the Lord has said. And I made it and I made it very clear. And I said, if this continues, this young man, South Africa, you laugh at this man. You call him uneducated. You call him unqualified. You call him an idiot. You call him a, a running mouth. You call him all sorts of names. But this is what I want you to hear and I want you to hear it well. The Lord qualifies the code. He does not call the qualified. This young man called Julius, you are laughing at. You are pointing finger. You think he's unqualified. Mark my words, you shall bow down to Julius Malema. I am telling you this. I've said it to presidents before. I've said it to leaders before. Many people did not believe me, but I've said it. Before, while his, your former president Zuma was in power, I said he will not finish his term. And I said who? I said Cyril. Not anybody else. I said a man shall take over and his name he shall be called Cyril. Go on YouTube and see my prophecies I have given concerning South Africa. All of them have come to pass. And I said Cyril, Cyril, Cyril. It shall happen in December. I see a man called Cyril being lifted up in the month of December. And exactly eight months later, in December, 
a man called Cyril was lifted up and was made the president of the nation called South Africa. Now, hear me and hear me well. A curse has been laid upon the land for 50 years because innocent blood was shed in the streets. You have been given warnings and you have been told to repent of these evil deeds, but you have refused. You have hardened your heart and they've hardened your heads. Therefore, the arm of the Lord is against you. This can be overturned if only your leaders and your people at the top will repent and humble themselves and find a day where they will come before the Lord, not in private. They should stop all this thing of calling youngers, wish doctors and prophets to come and pray for them in their houses. Not in private, but as a nation and to call the nation to say, we are coming before the Lord to ask for forgiveness for the blood that was shed in our land. And ask for forgiveness if they will not humble themselves and do this what I have said. South Africa will be under a curse for 50 years. And I said two months ago, and for, I said for those 50 years, every disaster that can locate South Africa will locate South Africa. Your economy shall be in tatters. Your nations, your society shall be in tatters. You shall run to the lands of the people you murdered and look for jobs. You shall run to the lands of the people you killed and look for employment and look for a place to stay. The wealth of your nations has been divided among the people of the blood that you shed. And listen to me, and listen to me very well. If you think I'm joking, if you think I guess, I don't guess, I don't care what you say. Because I know after this word comes out, there shall be some prophets. There shall be some men and women of God who say it will not happen. They will rise up and they will do prayers. They will say we rebuke the words of a false prophet. They will stand up and they say we will pray it will not happen. They will dismiss this prophecy as nothing is utter useless. I will not fight you. I will not dispute your prayers. I will not dispute your words. I will not dispute what you are saying or thinking right now. That I'm joking and I'm lying and you do not happen in your nation. I will not dispute what I'm saying. I will not dispute. I will not fight for God. I will not fight for the word of God like this. My God shall prove himself. Time will be the best revealer. If I am lying, if I'm a false prophet, it will not happen. But if I am telling the truth, you shall see this to happen. I will not. There shall be men and women who shall dispute these words and say that these are false. You, for, you prophet, you evangelist, you pastor, you preacher, stop giving people the words that tickle their ears and lead them to the grave. Stop giving them words they want to hear that tickle their ears and do not take them to heaven. Preach righteousness and preach the truth as the Lord gave you to do in the beginning. Do not be afraid to speak what the Lord has said because you are afraid of what people will say or you will lose people in your congregation. You are afraid of persecution. The moment you accepted the cross, you accepted persecution from people. There will be people who shall come and who shall dispute what I am saying. They shall stand and they'll say, I'm lying on the words I spoke. They shall do all nights and altars and speak against me concerning the words I've said concerning the country. But understand that these words are not mine. I have no peace. I'm not South African. I've got my own land that I pray for continually every day. If the Lord puts it in my heart to speak a word, I speak it. Your blood shall not be on my hands because I refuse to speak. I shall speak it as the Lord has commanded me to speak. If I am lying, understand that time is the best revealer. I will not come to dispute your words. I will not come to dispute your speaking. I will not come to dispute what you will say to say I'm lying and false. Time. Is the best revealer. Starting two months ago, the curse has already been laid. See what is going to happen in your nation. If your leaders do not repent, 
you will see what shall happen in your land. This is for the land of South Africa. And I will repeat again, for a time that is very soon to come, I repeat again, for a time that is very soon to come, this man called Julius, you laugh at. This man called Julius, you point fingers. This man called Julius, we call him uneducated and unqualified. Very soon, you shall all bow down before the same man. I'm a prophet. I speak it as it is. For my own nation of Zimbabwe, I spoke it. And I said, the same man you are attacking, if he is not going to become the president in one month, as the Lord has said to me, then I'm a false prophet. And people laughed at me and said, the former president who was there at the time will never be removed and he shall die in power. And I said, I don't speak what you said I should speak. I speak what I've said. Those from Zimbabwe and those who come from church who understand what I said. I said that if he does not come the president, the current president, I said, if he does not come for, if he doesn't become the president in one month, then I'm a false prophet. I actually said what? Bring me alcohol. Bring me cocaine. Bring me prostitute. I'll sleep with prostitutes in front of the church. Drink alcohol. Take cocaine and proclaim that there is no, there's no God. If he is not the president. And in exactly one month, the same person they were laughing at was the president of Zimbabwe, and he still is. This is the same words, Julius. Julius. I shall say no more. Julius. 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 I told America. Clinton. Mm -mm. Trump. Mm -hmm. what is happening today pray those who have got ears listen to what the spirit is saying those who have got ears let them hear I don't know when there are going to be pre elections in South Africa I did not say now I didn't say he's going to be president to tomorrow I didn't say it's going to be president very soon. Mm -mm. Lest my words be taken out of context. When the time for him to become president comes, I will tell you. When the time for him to become a leader, I'll come and proclaim that his time has come. As of now, I just notified you of what is going to happen in the future. I did not tell you now is the time. I said something is going to happen. I didn't say it is now. I said when it is time, I'll come and I'll tell you. For the nation of Japan, I want them to pray. I saw a lot of water coming from the ocean and running into the land. And I saw many people killed and many people lost their lives. We need to pray against this water that I saw coming into the land and destroying and killing many lives. The people of Japan, please pray for the nation. Pray for the nation. The nation of India, I will tell you what I saw in a vision. I had been praying and I have been fasting and I went to sleep. As I went to sleep, I saw something. I saw two angels that were standing, one on the right and one on the left. And in the middle of these two angels was a huge mountain. And while I was looking at these angels, they were as tall as the sky itself. The angel that was on the right was holding a spear. The angel that was on the left was holding a sword. The angel that was holding a spear then said, Go and warn the people that Jesus Christ is coming soon. When I heard this, I turned around and I started to run away. And I said, I'll go and warn people. And I went and I went and I was running, warning people. While I was still on the way, the second angel that was holding the sword then spoke and said, Prophet, it is already too late. 
the end of the world has already started. And when I turned around to see the angel that was speaking, I saw a dark cloud that was coming from the sky. And it had lightning and it had so much violence in it. And it was descending from the sky going downwards. When I saw this cloud coming down, the angel that was holding the sword then said, the end of the world is started, but judgment is starting in India. Hear me and hear me what I said. The angel that was holding the sword says, the end of the world has started, but judgment is starting in India. Hallelujah. I looked at it. And while I was doing so, I saw the cloud coming down. The moment it reached the ground, the cloud, it touched on the ground. Whatever it touched on the ground, I saw that everything that it would come in contact with would be reduced to ash. Would be reduced to ashes. And destruction was happening. So when it was happening, I started running. And as I was running, this cloud was catching up with me. And as it was catching up with me, I began to be scared because I said, oh, this cloud is about to destroy me as well. And as I was running away, I saw the angel that was holding the spear says, run to the front of the cloud. You will be saved. And the only way for me to get to the front of the cloud was to go in through the cloud. And I ran through the cloud. And as I was running through the cloud, my clothes were being torn and being bent off. That by the time I got to the front of the cloud, I was almost naked. And when I got to the front of the cloud, I saw a man. He was not wearing a shirt. He was bare-chested. And he was standing, facing where the cloud was moving. But he was not standing on the ground. He was hovering above the ground. And when I ran to the man, automatically I knew who it was. And I knelt down and I said, my Lord, save me. And then he looked at me, then he said, if only they had listened to the words of my prophets, they would have been saved. And I said to the man that was in front of the cloud, and I said, my Lord, what shall I do then to be saved? Then he said, go before the cloud reaches you. Go and build a house out of concrete. In the middle of your house, put two pillars. When the cloud of destruction comes, stand and hold the pillars, one hand to the right, one hand to the left, and let the cloud pass you by, your house will stand. And I ran and I built that house. And when the cloud came, I put my hand on the both pillars in the middle of my house. And everything around me was destroyed except my house. And the vision ended. Listen. India. There is a lot of idolatry that is happening in your land. And because of this idolatry, the wrath of God is upon it. The wrath of God is upon it. Repent out of idolatry. Because the judgment of God has already started in your nation. The wrath of God has already started in your nation. Repent of this idolatry. Immediate prayers. The Christian community in India needs to gather and pray. That the wrath of God concerning these idols that you have taken and made them as God among us, your nations and your people. God will have mercy upon your nation. Please, hear me, the nation of India. Gather up. Pray against the wrath of God concerning the idols. Judgment has already started and destruction is about to come to your nation. These elections that are about to come in your nation, I see bloodshed. I see bloodshed. You see a lot of bloodshed in that nation. Is there a party called UD or UD something? Hmm. 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 
I have spoken. So, I'm praying. And I'm praying and I'm praying and I'm praying. America, hear me well. What is supposed to happen in November is going to happen at the beginning of the year. What is supposed to happen at the beginning of the year shall happen at the end of the year. What am I talking about? The wrath of God and the hand of God is upon the wicked of your people. As a result of the wicked of your people, your weather that is supposed to happen at the end of the year shall happen at the beginning of the year. The beginning of the year shall come to the end of the year. I see breaking news. Breaking news. Breaking news. A lot of snow shall be found in unfamiliar places in your land. When you see this unfamiliar snow falling in your land, know that you need to pray. Know that you need to pray. Hallelujah. Like I said, I did not come here to make this long. Like I said, I did not come here to speak too much. I came here to deliver a word and for those that have got ears to hear, to hear what the Spirit of the Lord is saying. If I am a false prophet, please go check my track record. I am telling you. I am telling you. I am telling you. Please, let us pray. I am praying for those countries that I said. I am praying for the nation that I have said. And I hope that the leaders and the people responsible will do the responsible thing. Let us pray. The will of God is for us to live in peace and in harmony. God loves us all. God loves you too. And I'm praying for you. It is the season of God's grace and mercy. And beloved, we are together. We we'll continue to pray together. A prophecy for one is a prophecy for all. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ be upon you all in Jesus' name. God bless you. God keep you in Jesus' name. Shalom.